Hi, here's a question I get asked often. Should I get a replacement grip or an overgrip? If you're new to the game or you haven't tried an overgrip before, you may consider trying it out for these two reasons. One, you can maintain the feel and the freshness by replacing it with an overgrip. So what I mean by that is I have a, uh, my racket here that I just replaced and with the overgrip, it comes in between a size two and three and that's how I like my grips. But I have one here that I've used for a couple of weeks and I'll go ahead and measure it to see where it's at. And typically over time, it's gonna get matted down and become smaller. So right now it's coming in at a four and a quarter. So that's a half size smaller. So I'll typically replace my overgrips in about every two weeks. Uh, the second reason to use an overgrip is that it actually costs less to maintain your grip. And uh, a pack of, a three pack of overgrip costs the same or sometimes even less than one replacement grip. So you'll be able to maintain your grip uh, more frequently and it'll cost less. But let's say you've tried an overgrip before and you didn't like it for possibly one of these two reasons. One, you might be the type of player that likes to really feel the bevels on the grip. So by having an overgrip on top of it, it does start to round off those edges. And the second is that as you put an overgrip onto your uh, replacement grip, it does increase the grip size, usually about by one size. Well, if this is the reason why you don't like using an overgrip, I may have a solution for you. However, I addressed that topic in another video titled Custom Overgrip Wrap. Okay, so which overgrip should I get? I guess the first question I should ask you, does color really matter? In other words, do you have a favorite color or do you want it to match your racket? Because if it does, there are a variety of colors you can choose from. No, the color doesn't really matter. I just want the best overgrip that's going to help me play better. I can't guarantee you're going to play better, but I can definitely help you get a better grip on your racket and your game. Great, sounds good to me. All right, so let's talk about the two most common types of overgrips. And so in the first category, we have tacky overgrips. Probably the two most popular brands are the uh, Wilson Pro Overgrip and the Yonex Super Grab. But I'm gonna throw my Prince Tacky Pro in there because that's what I use. Uh, these provide a nice cushion with a sticky and grippy feel. Uh, some are thicker and others are thinner and some are sticky and some are stickier. But on the Pro Tour, you'll notice that uh, if you see a white overgrip, it's probably a tacky overgrip. In fact, Roger Federer is one of those that uses the Wilson Pro Overgrip. And it has the best absorbency and feel compared to the other uh, colors that they make. And uh, it's believed that there is either no dye or whatever ingredients they're using to make the white dye uh, on these overgrips is, um, it keeps it more in its natural state which uh, is the reason why it's more absorbent and has the feel that it does. Uh, generally, tacky overgrips will maintain their tackiness as long as you can keep your sweat off the grip. The second type of overgrip are your dry overgrips. And probably the most popular is the original Turner grip that came out in the 70s, made popular by Pete Sampras. And if you see other pros that are playing with this colored grip, it's probably the, the Turner grip. Uh, the one thing about the Turner Grip is that it did, um, it does wear out pretty quickly. And uh, they came out with a newer version of it though called Turner Tough. And if you haven't tried this before, uh, you should give that a shot if you're a Turner Grip user. Uh, the other type of dry overgrip is your Yonex Dry Grab. And this also comes in an olive color. And what I've noticed though from color to color, they all pretty much feel the same and have the same absorbency. So the feel of a dry overgrip is, uh, it's more of a firm feeling grip. They tend to be a little bit thinner and uh, it feels more like suede or a kind of a cloth feel. So uh, dry overgrips in general uh, are more absorbent 
uh, compared to tacky overgrips, and it works really well in humid conditions. In fact, it maintains its feel even when it gets sweaty. All right, so now that I explained the two types of overgrips, I have to ask you a personal question. Do you have sweaty hands or sweaty arms when you play tennis? Mm. I don't think I have sweaty hands, but I do, I, I, I do sweat, my arms sweat. And I think mostly like on the inside of my arms. Um, and I have noticed that when I'm doing my volleys, sometimes the racket will like jerk, like out of, it's literally twisting mm. in my hand. All right, so if you have sweaty arms, then you probably want to prevent the sweat from coming down into your hand. So I have a solution. If you use a wristband, mm -hmm. and you can put that on your right side, uh, basically what it's going to do is stop the sweat from coming down into your hand, and that'll keep your grip from probably twisting. So now that you have a wristband and you don't have sweaty hands, you can pick from a dry or a tacky over grip, and you can take your pick. Great. I'm curious though, <laughs> what if I had said I had sweaty hands, then what would you say? I'm glad you asked. So a person that has sweaty hands, the best solution would be a dry overgrip because of its ability to absorb moisture and uh, maintain its feel when it gets sweaty. However, if you're a person that has sweaty hands, it's likely that you have sweaty arms. So it's still a good idea to use a wristband to avoid any kind of sweat going into your hand. Uh, another good product to use is a grip enhancer and Prince has this uh, grip plus and basically it works like an antiperspirant so it keeps your hand nice and dry and it also provides antibacterial protection too. All right so earlier you said you had sweaty hands. I didn't have sweaty hands. I said I didn't have sweaty hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna go in the blooper. <laughs> All right come back here you. <laughs> So earlier you mentioned you have sweaty arms and so with this information what did you end up choosing? Well I decided I would start wearing a wristband and I like the feel of the turn it tough dry grip so I decided to go with that. All right good choice. Thanks. Um, so I'm curious what kind of grip do you use? Well like you I have sweaty arms and um, I do use a wristband so I always have that on my my right side and uh, I like the feel of the tacky um, the Prince tacky pro over grip oh, okay sounds like you made a good choice too thanks <laughs> thanks for watching happy gripping and, and let, let your, your strings, strings play. play all right so I'm back and I wanted to share a couple of tips on wrapping over grips and um, I'll start with this dry grip and you want to pay attention to which side the cellophane is on and sometimes it could be on the side that goes on the bottom and some, sometimes on the top where your hand is going to be touching. And on this Yonex dry wrap, it happens to be on the bottom and um, the way you can tell too is that the uh, tapered end is uh, usually cut for a right hander and then there's the uh, uh, double stick tape on that side. Uh, but most grips tend to have the uh, cellophane on the surface that you're going to be uh, touching. So that would be the case um, in this turn a tough. Although on the wrapping, it did mention that you can go either side. And I did try it on the back side, the side without the cellophane, but it just felt like uh, really um, almost like paper. It wasn't very um, absorbent. It just felt really, uh, um, it didn't have a good feel. So on this uh, turn it tough, I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap it, but you'll notice that it doesn't have a tapered end. And uh, so you can go ahead and most people just wrap it just uh, as is. Uh, but one of the things if you wanted to is that you can actually cut the tapered end yourself. And what I'm gonna do here is cut it for a right-hander. So I'm, I'm gonna copy what's on this Yonex uh, grip. And it's about five and a half inches from the tip to where the angled cut is. So what I'm gonna do is just measure at about five and a half inches from the uh, corner of the grip. And then I'm just gonna freehand the, the angled cut. So I got five and a half right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just basically, I'm just gonna cut a, a tapered end on this for a right-hander. So I'll go ahead and 
Just make my cut as straight as I can. And again, it, it's not necessary that you do this, but if you want to get a nice clean uh, feel at the butt cap end of the grip, uh, this will help. So I got that off. I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of the cellophane off on this side. And you always want to prepare the, uh, the tape, the trim tape ahead of time because you want your hands, your hands are going to be working on the grip. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the backing and I'm just going to stick it on the end of the table here. So uh, what I have here is um, the end of the grip, over grip, and I'm just going to go ahead and start. And uh, for a right-hander, you always want to make sure that you're going counterclockwise so you can see how the butt cap is facing you right now and the over grip is going to just be going around in that direction so i just made the first rotation and i was holding with my finger and i just made the overlap there so so basically you're just going to keep wrapping it till you reach the top of the grip and i have about an eighth of an inch of overlap that i'm going to be doing throughout the uh, entire grip and um, that's about right for this grip. Uh, some people like to overlap it even more, but you are gonna tend to uh, build up the grip more if you uh, start overlapping it by more than I would say an eighth of an inch. And I am pulling it with slight pressure, but not, um, not overly tight. And, and again, when you reach the top, uh, you can cut it or some, a lot, some people just don't bother to cut it. I've seen people just wrap it around the, the end and just tape it. But then you got all this bulk at the end of all this extra overgrip. Um, I've seen other people actually fold it and, and kind of make a makeshift taper that way. But I'm going to do it uh, by actually cutting it. So it's just like how you would install a replacement grip. All right, so I have the end right here where I want to make this... Uh, grip end so it's going to be right where this uh, black uh, trim tape on the bottom is and I'm just going to mark it with a pen and basically you're just going to make a cut from these two marks that I'm making right there so if I unravel it and you want to make sure that you unravel it but you keep it so that the, the grip doesn't uh, unravel but if you can see the marks it's uh the mark is from right here to there and that's where you have to cut so I'm trying to make sure that I'm not going to let go of this end of the overgrip so as I get closer to the end I'm going to just hold it right here with my two fingers and then finish the rest of the cut right there and so what you want to do is make sure that that cut end of the grip is always going to be at the very top I've seen people cut it the other way around where the where the cut you can see it in in the in the top part of the grip so i have my uh, trim tape here and just gonna make sure you get it around here and i always like to cut the end uh at a slight angle it does kind of keep it down and um so i'm just gonna cut it right here bring the rubber collar down to it to hide the tape so there it is the, that's the uh, uh, dry overgrip all right so here's another example of um, an application of an overgrip and in this case uh, this one is already tapered and I'm gonna take off the cellophane and this is the one that uh, had the cellophane on the, the underneath of the overgrip and um, most overgrips have a uh, double stick tape at the end, but I, I like to actually cut it off because uh, you really don't need it because once you uh, rotate it around, it will stay down. But at the very um, most, what I'll do is I'll cut it off so there's only a little bit of tape uh, that's gonna stick onto the end of the uh, butt cap because typically what'll happen if you keep adding um, 
uh, when you install a new overgrip, you're gonna notice that it does kind of chew up at the bottom of the grip, starts peeling it up. So what I would typically do is um, instead of having that um, uh, double stick tape all the way on the butt cap end, I'll just cut off a little portion, if anything. And uh, so I might cut it off so it's only about that much. And that, that way it'll be enough to kind of have it stick, anchor it down into the butt cap, but yet not pull off so, so much of the uh, uh, replacement grip. So uh, you can experiment with that. Uh, this is a dry grip, so this might tend to slide a little bit more. So maybe you can leave it like uh, a little bit like that. But if I was wrapping a, a tacky grip like this one, uh, you can't see it because it's all white, but I would just cut off the entire double stick tape and just start um, wrapping it onto a grip. So you can notice on this one, there's none of that um, bottom of the grip being all chewed up or um, the surface being removed from the uh, sticky tape. So anyway, those are my two tips for wrapping and over grip. All right, so I'm back again for one more time and I thought I'd share this with you because I recently had a customer that brought their rackets in for restringing. But when they dropped it off, uh, they were making a comment about how slippery the overgrip was and they recently replaced it with the Dunlop SuperTac. So if you ever worked with this grip before, uh, check out this picture and comment down below if you can figure out why it felt so slippery.